Hey, what's up, everybody? Mike back with another video. So if you follow me on social media, you will have seen me tweet and uh, post pictures over on Facebook for a device called the Puppy Cube. This is a fully interactive touchscreen projector, and I've got it here in the studio for you guys to check it out. Now, this is a fully funded Indiegogo campaign, and honestly, this thing looks interesting as hell. It's got a hefty price tag, so let's go check it out and see if this thing is actually worth the investment. <laughs> The team behind the Poppy Cube actually specializes in the field of robotics. They're called Poppy Robot, hence the name Poppy Cube. I mean, they went out to create a lightweight projector, that's an ultra short throw projector, that will also turn any surface into a 10 point touchscreen interactive screen. I mean, touchscreen projectors aren't a new concept, but at this form factor, it's pretty cool. I mean, they use something called any touch technology, which is more commonly found in touchscreen interfaces like a photo kiosk or an airport where you can check the flights, or maybe like a gaming machine in an arcade the question here is has this technology been integrated well into the puppy cube if so this device will appeal to a lot of people and the uses for it could be pretty much endless depending on what your requirement or your need is in terms of the device it's relatively portable measuring 5 inches by 3.5 by 9 inches in depth approximately the same size as something like the JMG V8 or a little smaller than an LG PF1000U for reference Weight-wise, coming in at 1.6 kilos, it's a little bit on the heavier side in terms of portability, but that's understandable when you account for the 11.1 volt, 5,000 milliamp rechargeable battery that they've packed inside this thing, plus all the added components like the sensors, which make this device as special as it is. Another thing I must admit I like was the way Poppy have designed this projector, not just in terms of look, but practicality too. For example, the cover panel for the ports is a sign that corners have not been cut, and the Poppy Cube is constructed out of what I can only say is a mix of PC and ABS giving an excellent balance between looks and high toughness to the exterior shell. The gap at the bottom also leaves a space for the power cord and even a pretty thick HDMI cable to fit through. This keeps everything nice and tidy. Input wise, we have one USB 3.0 host. We have a HDMI 2.0 and we also have the DC input. In terms of output, we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack that you can actually uh, use to hook up a soundbar. The projector also packs two five watt speakers and I must admit these are some of the best speakers I've actually heard on any portable projector over the last 12 months. Even at about 80% volume, sound distortion levels are pretty minimal. Taking out the touch element and looking at the Poppy Cube as just a projector, first thing that came to my mind is, why did they not use a 1080p DLP chip? It's a native 720p chip inside the Puppy Cube, but it does support 1080p, 2K and 4K. The projector also covers 100% of the NTSC colour space and the brightness uniformity comes in at more than acceptable 85%, which is actually rather good. Black levels could be a little bit better. Keystone correction wise, it supports automatic or vertical keystone correction. That said, you also have access to manual keystone correction, so feel free to mess about with that. The projector is capable of a 100 inch screen when it's not in its vertical state, but I would recommend a max screen size of about 80 inches to retain a lot more detail in your image. Little disappointed to see that the brightness is only 300 NSI lumens, but if you stick to around 80 inches, it's perfectly fine. So one of the big thing for me is responsiveness in the software. So I think this is the same for a lot of you out there talking to you guys over on the comment section. The Puppy Cube is running on a custom version of Android 6.0 and I will say that this thing has never crashed or froze in two weeks of solid testing. So I've got to give them props. The custom Puppy UI 1.0 is very good. So it does need a few tweaks here and there, but again, that will come with future updates. And again, remember that this is a prototype unit. It also runs on both Wi-Fi bands, so great for streaming content. The projector is running on the MSTAR 6A938, which from memory is a pretty reliable chip. And when you specially pair it with four gigabytes of RAM, that's going to be a great experience. Onboard storage wise, it's got 32 gigabytes of eMMC storage, so which is much better than something like my Xgimme H1. So again, that's a nice touch. The software element, I've got to say, is very good. There needs to be a few tweaks here and there, but again, this is version one and this will improve. The UI looks very practical and easy to use with plenty of options to mess about with as well. The device also has a built-in camera so you can Skype mum and dad or use it in a school environment or use it in a work environment to do a conference call. The camera is actually pretty decent, it's got a 5 megapixel sensor and the microphone quality was what did it for me. The sound quality that you can actually converse with is really good, not acceptable but actually really good. 
Video quality wise, going back to the projector element, the image is sharp, the color tones can be adjusted, you can even turn on HDR to boost the image a little bit. Obviously the HDR thing is a little bit gimmicky because the projector doesn't have enough lumens to achieve the full high dynamic range. All that said, the overall image quality at 80 inches is just as good as something like the Wawutu H8, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. One thing that PuppyCube does not have is the Google Play Store built in. Now obviously there may be a workaround in the future, but for now, don't worry, it comes loaded with something that you might have heard of or might not have heard of. It's called Up to Down. On the whole, it's pretty much like the Google Play Store. Everything you need or everything that you use on a daily basis like Netflix, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, the list goes on, is actually there. In terms of the built-in battery's capabilities on the Puppy Cube, it's better than most of the portable projectors. Granted, most of the portable projectors are much smaller, but they tend to have a runtime of about two and a half hours in standard brightness mode. This device, however, on full brightness, averages around three hours plus, which is pretty impressive feat, unless you want to watch a rather long film like Lord of the Rings or maybe The Ten Commandments. So to sum up, good image quality, built-in camera and the mic opens up a whole world of possibilities. The UIs and the menu design is great, and the user experience is absolutely fantastic. The responsiveness of the touch sensors in this projector was not perfect, but they are very good. Only thing that might put you on the fence about this projector is the $899 price tag. When you think about it, for about $100 more, you can now pick up a ViewSonic PX747, which is a 4K projector, but that's only relevant if you're after just a projector. The Puppy Cube is so much more. So until next time, my name is Mike. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I'll catch you on the next one.